welcome back. In this video, we will be reading another chapter of The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Kate DiCamello. Chapter 3 She is called the Queen Mary, said Abilene's father, and you and your mama and I shall sail on her all the way to London. What about Pellegrina, said Abilene? I will not go, said Pellegrina. I will stay. Edward, of course, was not listening. He found the talk around the dinner table excruciatingly dull. In fact, he made a point of not listening if he could help it. But then Abilene did something unusual, something that forced him to pay attention. As the talk about the ship continued, Abilene reached for Edward, took him from his chair, and stood him in her lap. And what about Edward? she said, her voice high and uncertain. What about him, darling? said her mother. Will Edward be sailing on the Queen Mary with us? Well, of course, if you wish. Although you're gay a little old for such things as China rabbits. Nonsense, said Abilene's father jovially. Who would protect Abilene if Edward were not here? From the vantage point of Abilene's lab, Edward could see the whole table spread out before him in a way that he never could when he was seated in his own chair. He looked upon the glittering array of silverware and glasses and plates. He saw the amused and consenting looks of Abilene's parents, and then his eyes met Pellegrina's. She was looking at him in a way a hawk hanging, hanging lazily in the air might study a mouse on the ground. Perhaps a rabbit fur on Edward's ears and tail and whiskers on his nose had some dim memory of being hunted, for a shiver went through him. Yes, said Pellegrina without taking her eyes off Edward. Who would watch over Abilene if the rabbit were not there? That night, when Abilene asked, as she did every night, if there would be a story, Pellegrina said, Tonight, lady, there will be a story. Abilene sat up in bed. I think that Edward needs to sit here with me, she said, so that he could hear the story, too. I think that is best, said Pellegrina. Yes, I think that the rabbit must hear the story. Abilene picked Edward up, sat him next to her in bed, and arranged the covers around him. Then she said to Pellegrina, We are ready now. So, said Pellegrina, she coughed. And so the story begins with a princess. A beautiful princess, Abilene asked. A very beautiful princess. How beautiful. You must listen, said Pellegrina. It is all, it is all in the story. Chapter 4 Once there was a princess who was very beautiful. She shone as bright as the stars on a moonless night. But what difference did it make that she was beautiful? None. No difference. Why did it make no difference? asked Abilene. Because, said Pellegrina, she was a princess who loved no one and cared nothing for love, even though there were many who loved her. At this point in her story, Pellegrina stopped and looked right at Edward. She stared deep into his painted on eyes, and again, Edward felt a shiver go through him. And so, said Pellegrina, still staring at Edward, what happened to the princess, said Abilene. And so, said Pellegrina, turning back to Abilene, the king, her father, said that the princess must marry. And soon after this, a prince came from a neighboring kingdom, and he saw the princess, and immediately he loved her. He gave her a ring of pure gold. He placed it on her finger. He said these words to her, I love you. But do you know what the princess did? Abilene shook her head. She swallowed the ring. She took it from her finger and swallowed it. She said, that is what I think of love. And she ran from the prince. She left the castle and went deep into the woods. And so, and so what, said Abilene? What happened next? And so the princess became lost in the woods. She wandered for many days. Finally, she came to a little hut and she knocked on the door. She said, let me in, I'm cold. There was no answer. She knocked again. She said, let me in. I am hungry. A terrible voice answered her. The voice said, enter if you must. The princess, the beautiful princess entered, and she saw a witch sitting at the table counting pieces of gold. 3,622, said the witch. I am lost, said the beautiful princess. What of it, said the witch. 3,623. I am hungry, said the princess. Not my concern, said the witch. 3,624. But I am a beautiful princess, said the princess. 3,625, replied the witch. 
My father, said the princess, is a powerful king. You must help me or there will be consequences. Consequences, said the witch. She looked up from her gold. She stared at the princess. You dare to talk to me of consequences? Very well, then. We will speak of consequences. Tell me the name of the one you love. Love, said the princess. She stamped her foot. Why must everyone always speak of love? Whom, who do you love, said the witch. You must tell me the name. You must tell me the name. I love no one, said the princess proudly. You disappoint me, said the witch. She raised her hand and said one word, Farth Figury, and the beautiful princess was changed into a warthog. What have you done to me, squealed the princess? Talk to me of consequences now, will you, said the witch, and she went back to count her pieces of gold. 3,626, said the witch, as the warthog princess ran from the hut and out again into the forest. The king's men are in the forest too, and what were they looking for? A beautiful princess. And so when they came upon an ugly warthog, they shot it immediately. Pow! No, said Aveline. Yes, said Pellegrina. The men took the warthog back to the castle, and the cook slid open its belly and inside it, she found a ring of pure gold. There were many hungry people in the castle that night, and all of them were ready to be fed. So the cook put the ring on her finger and finished butchering the warthog. And the ring that the beautiful princess had swallowed shone on the cook's hand as she did her work. The end. The end, said, Ab said Abeline indignantly. Yes, said Pellegrina. The end. But it can't be. Why can't it be? Because it came too quickly, because no one is living happily ever after, that's why. Ah, uh, and so, Pellegrin nodded. She was quiet for a moment. But answer me this. How can a story end happily if there is no love? But, well, it is late, and you must go to sleep. Pellegrin took Edward from Abilene. She put him in his bed and pulled the sheet up to his whiskers. She leaned, she leaned close to him. She whispered, you disappoint me. After the old lady left, Edward lay in his small bed and stared up at the ceiling. This story he thought had been pointless, but then most stories were, and he thought of the princess and how she had become a warthog. How gruesome, how gross to, what a terrible fate. Edward said Abilene, I love you. I don't care how old I get, I will always love you. Yes, yes, thought Edward. He continued to stare up at the ceiling. He was agitated for some reason that he could not name. He wished that Pellegrin had put him on his side so they might look at the stars. And they remember Pellegrin's description of the beautiful princess. She shone as bright as the stars on a moonless night. For some reason, Edward found comfort in these words. He repeated them to himself. As bright as the stars on a moonless, on a moonless night. As bright as the stars on a moonless night over and over until at last the first light of dawn appeared chapter five thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe for the next chapter see you next time